Today I'm going to be reviewing this Aravive Mark IV. Now, two years ago I got the chance to review the Mark I and I have to say I wasn't very impressed. It was too underpowered and cost too much in filters to be a device I could recommend. So I'm really hoping for a lot more from the Mark IV. Now, if you don't want to watch my full review, here are the three things I like about this device and the four things I don't. The first one is, is the air cleaning performance is much better than the Mark I. It's also a fairly small device, it's easy to live with, doesn't take up too much space, and its initial cost is not too bad. It ranges from between $90 and $120. Now, the four things I don't. The first one is that performance when compared to devices from Lavoie and Winx, even when we look at devices that cost the same amount of money, you get much better performance with the other brands. It also has higher than average running costs. The filters need changing really often with this device and they start to add up. It also has a UVC light as a filter, which just doesn't make sense for a small air purifier like this. It's likely to be absolutely useless and it's just gonna add to the cost. And the, finally, the carbon that this device uses is this really cheap fabric and I just can't imagine that amount of carbon is really going to do anything for odours and gases. Right, let's jump into the full review. Now at the start of this review, I mentioned that this was a super popular seller on Amazon, but how do I know? Because Amazon doesn't share this data publicly. But I'm able to use two tools, Amazon Scout and Helium 10. Now these tools are aimed at Amazon sellers, but one of the interesting things for a reviewer like me is they give estimated revenue for any product on Amazon. And for the Aravive Mark IV, it was pretty impressive sales numbers. So according to Amazon Scout, it was $843,000 in the last 30 days. And according to Helium 10, it was one. 1 million, which assuming an average price of around $100, you're looking between eight and 10,000 units sold per month, which is really impressive, especially for a brand name that I've really not heard of before. So I'm hoping it's because this is an impressive device. Now it's worth noting that the Aravive Mark I is actually doing twice the revenue of this larger version. So this is probably selling even more, maybe more like 16,000 units per month. Okay, let's jump into the design of this device. As I said, it, the design, if we compare it to the Mark I, it is a lot more aesthetically pleasing, you could argue. I like this use of the kind of leather slide for to pulling out the filters, but similar to the Mark I, many of the uh, buttons on the device, it just feel fairly cheap. So to switch on the device, you kind of have the main button there. There are only two speeds, so we have so this is speed one, speed two, and then auto. It has timers, eight hours, 12 hours, 24, as well as a, a sleep mode and a filter reset button as well. Now it has the UV light, which again, I, I mentioned at the, in the start, I just can't see how this would be useful, but we'll go into more detail later on. But similar to the Aravive Mark I, the buttons just, they just feel cheap. They don't feel like the, the, the level of quality that we see in even other budget brands like Lavoie, Winex, and Coway. Uh, but yeah, from a, from a design's perspective, it isn't a bad, a bad unit. So what's my problem with UVC light in an air purifier like this? Well, according to the research, a normal UVC bulb would need at least 12.6 seconds of interaction with air to be able to have any meaningful effect. Now, Smart Air wrote a really good post about UVC light, so I don't want to go into too much detail and I'll drop it in the, the comments below, but it feels like UVC in this case is just used as a marketing gimmick. I, I'm hoping that it's not too strong to actually cause exposure damage, and if it isn't strong enough, then I can't imagine it's doing anything useful such as killing bacteria or viruses with such a low powered bulb. Now, for all the reviews we do here at House Fresh, we always like to check out the Association of Home Appliance manufacturers to look for a KDAR test. KDAR is short for clean air delivery rate and it's a lab report that tests how well an air purifier can remove dust, pollen and smoke. Now there is a KDAR report for the Mark 5 and the Mark 7 but there isn't for the Mark 1 or the Mark 4 which is a shame which means we're going to have to use our air cleaning performance test to find out how effective it is. Now in the marketing for the Aravive Mark 4 they mentioned that it can clean the air in a thousand square feet and provide one air change. So following that back, assuming eight foot ceilings, that gives us an estimated KDAR of around 133 CFM. 
Now be aware that many brands, not just Aravive, use the one air change per hour to give an inflated figure for room sizes. So yes, it can clean the air once in a room up to a thousand square feet, but that's not gonna be very useful. If you had an issue, say with pollen, then you wanna be cleaning that room far more regularly. Now the EPA suggests that you should look for an air cleaner with 4.8 air changes, and that's what we use at House Fresh, but even in worst case scenario, you want at least four air changes. Now for 4.8 air changes for an estimated KW 133 CFM, you're looking at a max room size of 200 square feet, and that's running it at its highest fan speed. So what filters do they use in the Aravive Mark IV? Well, I looked at the marketing material on their website and then on the Amazon listing page, and they, they're not very clear. So they call it a high efficient filter layer, which sounds like HEPA, but it's not. Now you'll notice on the website and on their listing that they don't use the term HEPA and that's probably for good reason because it's unlikely that this is HEPA and if they did say it was HEPA they could get in trouble with the Better Business Bureau or the brands could make complaints as we saw with Lavoie. I have reached out to Aravif to ask them. Uh, it's been around six days now. No one's got back to me to, to tell me what grade uh, of HEPA it is. But my assumption would be that because they haven't said it's HEPA, it's probably a lower grade, uh, not HEPA grade, which I've talked about this in other videos. This isn't actually a bad thing, especially for a small device like this. HEPA grade or you know extreme uh, HEPA grade, like say HEPA 14, would actually restrict airflow so much that this would actually be less efficient as an air cleaner. So it's likely this is lower than HEPA grade. And we get to the carbon filter. And this is, I think, where the most disappointment is with this particular uh, filter. This carbon is just a kind of, it feels like a sprayed on carbon. Um, and I just can't imagine this doing much. In, when we're looking for carbon, we mainly want the, the pelleted type. That's been shown to be m more efficient than the fabric type. But this type feels even like kind of worse than some, I mean, it's just the fabric type, but as you can see here, it's very, very thin. So I can't imagine this being super effective at dealing with any sort of odors. Another thing to mention is that this filter doesn't actually have a pre-filter. So the, the carbon in this is acting like the pre-filter and they do say that you have to kind of clean this regularly. And this just makes it more difficult. And we've been shown in, in studies and our own testing that a dirty pre-filter can really affect the efficiency of a device. So not having a pre-filter is actually not a good thing. So let's jump into the real world performance test. Because there is no Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers KDAR score, we're gonna to have to take the marketing material estimate of 133 CFM, but there's no way to confirm that without our own testing. Luckily, we're gonna test this device in the same test room we've tested over 70 different air purifiers. We light incense smoke and then track the levels of PM1, PM2.5 and PM10 with a number of purple air laser air quality sensors. Now the Aravive Mark IV managed to clean our test room of all PM1 pollutants in 41 minutes, which does align with the KDAR estimate that we worked out from the marketing materials. We can also look at these test results to other devices we've tested. So the Aravive Mark I, the device from two years ago that we tested, took a whopping 163 minutes to clean our test room, but it is much cheaper at $49.99. Now the Lavoit Core 300, a device from five years ago, took 40 minutes and currently is around $84.99. The Shark HP 102 took 38 minutes, but is much higher price at $149. The Winex A230, one of our top budget choices from Winex, took 35 minutes at $78.99. And the Lavoit Vital 100S, one of the newer devices from Lavoit, took 28 minutes at $109. Whilst it is much better than the older Mark I, it's still beaten by a number of units at a similar or even lower price point. Next, we wanted to look at sound levels and we tested the Aravive Mark IV in the same way that we test all of our devices. We used a sound meter like this at three feet away to see how much sound is generated from each speed. So on sleep mode, it was 44.9 decibels. At speed one, it was 49.3 decibels. And at speed two, which is the top speed for this device, it was 55.6 decibels. We can compare this to other devices we've tested. So the Akasaiwa Air Max 10L had a max sound level of 55.6 decibels. The Winex A230, 57.9 decibels. Lavoit Core 300, 50.2 decibels. And the Winex 5502, 58.9 decibels. It was similar to other devices we tested, but it was interesting that it had a much higher sound level than the Lavoit Core 300. 
Now, I was also interested to see how fast this could clean the air at its lower speed, speed one, which at 49.3 decibels is much quieter and probably easier to live with. So I tested, I did our same test in the same test room with incense smoke at speed one. Now in our tests, it took 56 minutes to clean our test room, which means that you've got a KDAR estimate of around 60 CFM, which really is quite small and only good enough for rooms up to 100 square feet max. We also look at the amount of energy that an air purifier uses by using an energy meter to see how much energy is used at each of its fan speed levels. And the results for this device were on standby, it was 0.37 watts, at speed one, 15.55 watts, and at speed two, 25.54 watts. Which means if you were to use this device 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, you would add an additional $26.85 onto your electricity bill. It's worth noting that energy costs are not the only thing to consider when looking at the running costs of using an air purifier. Any air purifier that uses any sort of mechanical filter such as HEPA or carbon will need replacing eventually. And the Aravive Mark IV is no different. Now they recommend you should replace the filters for this device every three to six months. And I have to say, when manufacturers give me a range, I always take them at the lowest range. So let's assume you have to replace them every three months, which means you're gonna to have to have four sets of filters every single year. Now you can get two packets of the OEM filters for $26.99 to $31.99, depending on which version you get. They have a smoke, they have a pet, and they have the standard mode. And this brings the filter cost for one year for this device to $107.96 to $127.96 if you go for the specialist smoke filters. So the total running cost for the Aravive Mark IV is $138.81 when you include the energy costs and the filter replacements. And we can compare this to other devices that we've tested. So for example, the Levoit Core 300, an older budget device, will cost you $91, the WinX A230, $95, the larger the WinX 5502, $135. The Molecular Air Mini, which has some of the highest filter costs on the market, $244. And even the Lavoit Vital 200S, one of our top units, which is much bigger, can clean much more air, was only $96 in running costs per year. Now this device has much higher costs than many larger air purifiers, mainly because these larger air purifiers don't need the filters replacing so often. Now, I've said it in other videos, but one of the reasons why I recommend that most people get larger devices is because of this. Filter costs quickly add up, and if you imagine $138 per year, even if you saved money and got this cheap device initially, after five years, you're looking at a massive investment to keep this device running. Some features worth mentioning about the Aravive Mark IV. So it does have an auto mode, but when I tested it, it really did take a lot longer to kick in than another device that I tested, which was the Lavoit Core 400S. So I'm gonna assume that the sensor is not the highest grade sensor, but it does work. Well. Do I recommend the Aravive Mark IV in 2024? Now, you're probably gonna guess what I'm gonna say, but the simple answer is no. It's just too costly to run. The air cleaning performance, whilst it is much better than the smaller version, and I'm glad to see that improvement, the fact that it uses a UVC light, it just feels like a gimmick. I can't imagine UVC light adds any extra value, and when you combine with the fact that the carbon filter is very, very poor grade and very small, I just can't see how this device is worth the money. For less money than the Aravive Mark IV, you can get the WinX A230 at $78, which is more effective at cleaning the air, but more importantly, the long-term running costs are much less. And if you're happy to pay a bit more or similar, depending on what the price is, you can look at the Lavoit Vital 100S, which gives you better, much better air cleaning performance and app support and many other features that you just don't get with this device. As always, let me know in the comments what you think of the review. And if you've got the Aravive Mark IV and you think I'm totally wrong, let me know. I'll see you in the next video.